after the Bank of England just raised the UK base rate for the 14th consecutive month to 5.25% from 5% the previous month. This has major implications for everything from mortgages through to savings rates and investments. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the implications for you, your portfolio and your money. Let's get into it. So the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee just released the minutes from its August meeting and they are raising interest rates to 5.25%. This is the 14th consecutive month that they've done this. For background, this policy committee has a goal of keeping inflation at 2% and the main mechanism for achieving this is using the base rate. The Monetary Policy Committee, or MPC as it's known, voted six to three to raise rates by a quarter percentage point. It's interesting to note that two members actually wanted to raise the rate by 0.5% and one member wanted to maintain rates at 5%. It's also worth noting that the market implied path for the base rate sees it rising to 6% in the coming year before falling again. The MPC notes that the underlying growth rate for the economy is 0.2% for the previous three months and they make mention of the resilience of the UK economy. However, more recent indicators do show some weakening of the economy. The consumer prices index for the 12 months to June actually fell to 7.9% from 8.7% in May. However, this still sits way above the bank's 2% target, and that's why they've raised rates today. So what does this mean for your money? Well, the first thing is mortgages. Clearly, mortgages are going to get more expensive from here. So if you're in the process of buying a home and you have a rate agreed with your bank or your lender, um, it's probably not gonna get better. So I would say stick with that rate and go ahead. If you're due to remortgage in the coming months, it is likely that you're going to have to swallow a higher rate and in order to maintain monthly payments at the current level, one option could be to extend your mortgage by a number of months or even years. I actually have a friend who works in banking who's in this position and that's exactly what he's doing. Next up for your cash savings, I would say this again strengthens the case for using money market funds as a place to park your cash or your emergency funds. I did a recent video on this, which I'll link above, which talks about how many money market funds today are offering yields in excess of what the average bank savings accounts rates are. If you have investments in the stocks and shares ISA or pension funds, the Bank of England raising rates today also impacts the investment outlook for your funds. For a start, rates going up will likely put pressure on equities markets as bonds become more attractive relative to stocks, particularly in the UK. As I mentioned in my recent video on the BlackRock mid-year investment outlook, income is back. And this actually can be attractive for fixed income investors looking to draw income from their investments for your pension or your retirement savings, the main thing you wanna be doing is contributing regularly and at a sufficiently high level to give yourself the best chance of success in building a sufficient retirement pot for when you do eventually retire. A couple more things. I do expect this will put more pressure on the UK economy and it's very likely that we're going to be heading into a recession in the second half of this year. It takes time for base rate rises to impact on the real economy, but as the Bank of England notes, recent data has shown a weakening in the UK economy. In tactical terms, this means working really hard and ensuring job security. Or if your job is sadly not secure, this means looking for work at organizations or firms where the outlook is more constructive. So that's my quick take. In summary, I think the UK is going through a really challenging period at the moment. And unfortunately, we're just gonna have to keep calm and carry on. Investing is a long-term discipline and behavioral factors drive success more than anything else. It's not smart for the average person to bet wildly in the markets and change their strategy with every new data point that comes into the market. If you build resilient portfolios that are well risk managed, you give yourself the best chance of success in the future. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep investing selectively and effectively.